Hello, everybody. Happy Sunday. This is going to be a very interesting show. And get ready for a thrill ride in finance. This is definitely the most free alpha you'll ever find on the planet. So let's strap in and let's go make some money. Thank you all for coming. Let's go. First of all, none of this is financial advice. We're going to cover a lot of interesting stuff. Arbing ETFs, MicroStrategy. We're going to look at miners. We're going to look at some coins. We're going to talk about exit liquidity. We're going to talk about options. We're going to talk about tops, bottoms, retracement levels. So much. Lots of price targets too. Lots of TA. Crazy one. And a big focus on miners, because everybody's thinking about miners. It was a big news week for the miners. We'll dig into that. And all the questions come from the team at Patreon. Thank you, everybody, for bringing them in every day. It helps us really focus on what matters out there for you all and what you're thinking about, what you're worried about. Thank you, Trask, as well. And also for those who celebrate, happy Easter. And I hope you find a basket full of Bitcoin in your garden, wherever you are. Uh, <laughs> thank you as well to the best graphics team on the planet behind all of this artwork. It's not me here, trust me. Now, let's go. Uh, first question is from Lomarty. Assuming Bitcoin tops this bull run around 175k and we follow previous cycles, how far a pullback can we expect? Brilliant, brilliant question. So I like the way people are thinking already about tops and what to do and plan, because I've spent uh, quite a bit of time Last week, you know, we were very good at picking the right assets and nailing the bottoms. The next focus on my plate, looking forward, I always plan years ahead, is how we nail the tops and how we optimize the strategies to exit and how we identify the winning assets to rotate into. I'll talk more about those too. That is my entire focus right now because our bags are packed. So let's look at the Lila retracement model here. Uh, this is a model that we actually built in 2021, 2022, exactly for this moment, not only to identify sniping layers, thank you, Brock, but also exit layers, profit taking layers, etc. It's a very versatile tool. And given, again, given where we are and the constant bid that the Bitcoin ETFs could bring. Bitcoin and the adoption and the new found scarcity and Metcalf's law, etc. We don't know exactly how high we're going to go till we get there, but we have tools to identify when we get close to the top. I think right now it's going to be a thing called level 10, which is exactly at $171,000, not the 175 that you think, but somewhere around there, but maybe only 115, maybe 150 maybe 171 but we will know because we analyze all the on-chain every day. Now, I'm thinking that based on not history, but based on the constant bid coming in from the ETFs, we may only have a level seven retracement, which would take us down about 51.49% or to a level of exactly, let me get sure I can read it here. I think it was about $82,941. So I call it 83K. If we do go to 171K, I don't see us retracing more than back down to 83K. So for all of those who might be buying right now with Bitcoin above 71,000, technically not promising anything. We don't know when the day is going to come, when it's the last time we'll ever see that level again. Was, will we ever see 62,000 again? Will we ever see 51,000 again? Will we ever see 42,000 again? Probably not, probably never. And that's just the nature of this beast. All right, so I want to hammer that home. Retracements will not be as deep as they were in the past, but we are students of history here. Let's talk about some history. The market surges can be absolutely massive. We can see six X's, we can see 20 X's. Right now, <laughs> we've gone from 15 and a half thousand to 71,000 in a very short window of time. Okay, for the kids watching at home, calculate how many multiples that is in X terms. Drop a comment below. I'll check your homework. But uh, people love participating in this little game. But the other issue is greed often overpowers fear. And this is the importance of psychology in the markets. When people who've been waiting to get in and they see the price going up and up and up, that's when the FOMO kicks in. That's when people lose their minds and then they chase. And that's why I say don't chase, replace. But anyway, 
uh, greed could really drive us to a very high level. We could get that crazy blow off top. We did not get last bull market. But remember, when that if a blow off top does happen, that does mean a nasty retracement will happen too. Because post greed, fear can take hold and that fear can overcome logic. So basically what I'm trying to say here is we overshoot to the upside and then overshoot to the downside. That's why markets are such a gift, everybody. You need to embrace the volatility. That's how money is made, everybody. Okay, and then final point. Based on history, we could <laughs> go up for 18 months and it could swiftly revert to a market correction right at that point. Markets can gradually go up, but they can fall much faster. So be aware of that too. So we don't know where we're going to go. So in quick summary, maybe 150, maybe 115, maybe 171, and then retracement back to 82 if we hit 171. If we only hit 150, the retracement could be back to about $71,000. That's the math. And because the internet's forever, this will be here forever, and we'll see how close I get. I like that. So let's go to the next question. This is from D-Man. Sol has already reached its all-time high market cap, but with current inflation rate of Sol, a lot of people staking at 7%, I question if we will go much higher than 260 to 300 bucks this cycle. Even that seems difficult. Well, let's break it down. First of all, one of the key things that we do here is we compare everything to everything all the time. That's why we spend an inordinate amount of time and money building models. So we have all the data at our fingertips. Let's look at some inflation perspective. And let's not look at Solana in isolation. What I did is I ranked all the inflation by all the layer ones, layer two, smart contract platforms, SCPs as I call them. And you can see that Solana is by nowhere near <laughs> The worst. In fact, it has a really good inflation rate of 5% right now. In fact, Cardano has an inflation rate of 4.9%. And a little bit of Cardano history. That was launched in 2017, but there was a public sale of 26 billion Cardano tokens in 2015. September 2015. Two years ahead of the so-called official launch. Okay, so the point is, even after... 10 years, we're going back to 2015, it's now 2024. They still have 4.9% inflation. Solana only launched late 2020, and it only has 5% inflation. That's the difference, and that's why things like compendium scores are very, very important to look at. And no, Solana inflation is nowhere, nowhere near as bad as many other things. In fact, it's really, really good compared to all the other assets. Now, let's talk about price, get back to your question. Solana's gone from $8 to 200 bucks. Yes, it's been quite incredible. And Solana is the widow maker. Yes, uh, it has destroyed a lot of people. It's wrecked so many shorts. And some people are still shorting it. And yes, Solana is the most hated asset. <laughs> the question is, why would it stop here? And I actually did a video about six months ago about being in uh, the most hated assets. Don't be in the friendly, cushy cults. Be in the hated assets, because they do really well. I'll talk about one of those as well, coming up in a little while. Okay, and we'll eradicate some FUD too. But let's look at the chart now for Solana. And it goes back to the same model we built in 2021. It's free for everybody. It's called the Sol Upside Model. Go to our website, and you can pull it down as well for free. But here, it's the simplest model I think we've ever created. And it basically benchmarks the number of tokens, of Solana and Ethereum calculates the price if Solana hits a certain percentage market cap of Ethereum. You've all seen it before. And I said, I bet my bottom dollar, it was going to smash 6% of ETH, then 10% of ETH, then 20% of ETH, and then 30% of ETH, and then 33% of ETH, and then 50% of ETH, and then 70% of ETH. And that's what it does because Cardano does Cardano. Solana does infinitely more transactions. It dominates DEXs, NFT volume, etc. And how it is not 33% of ETH market cap is completely nuts. So taking 33% of ETH market cap would take the price target to 350. 50% 50 of ETH takes it to 520. 70% of ETH takes it to 700. But the crazy thing is, this assumes the ETH price does not stay. In fact, ETH shot up $100 since I put this chart here. So this target is moving. So if I showed you this chart again right now on TradingView, 
the targets would be higher because ETH has gone up 100 bucks just in two hours. So that's how crazy this market is. So in terms of it can't go up anymore, benchmarking against all the competition, the inflation is actually really low. Yes, staking rewards are very high. That's why I stake my soul. It's incredible. I actually made a video of how you can make 280% return on capital by just staking for a year and a half. It's bonkers. You buy at eight, you stake at 7%. And then you, it's, it's a very interesting math model. Anyhow, yes, we're going higher. And it is the consensus trade. Let's go to the next question from, let me see, Mo2030. Long time listener and new to Patreon. <laughs> and Patreon is 10x better. Yes. We have fun on the inside. Thank you for being here. Uh, I'm stuck in a Vanguard IRA with GBTC. What will be the faster horse for the rest of the bull run, GBTC or MSTR? And should I be swapping GBTC to MSTR? But that does carry the risk of not being able to get back into the trade ever. So first of all, why are you being Vanguarded? If you have an IRA, you can move it. You can move it anywhere. You can move it in a heartbeat. You can move it to Fidelity. You can move it to Robinhood. In fact, Robinhood will give you 3% of your money. And I'm not promoting anything, but just saying, <laughs> if you move a million dollars to Robinhood, they'll give you 30 grand for free. Okay? Up until the end of April, I think. I could be wrong on that. But anyway, check it out. Uh, but Vanguard is not a friend of Bitcoin. Therefore, you should not be a friend of Vanguard. And don't be Vanguarded. So fun word now let's look at what you can do and we have many members that have literally doubled their bags in like three or four months by pair trading between you know assets like this so let's talk about this for a second this is a model called the ATR it's on the eight hour time frame noise suppression is set to high and you get an 83 percent win rate trading micro strategy to GBTC pair now this is so important you have to always bear in mind where the pairs come from. All right. So over the last year, GBTC went from being like a 50% discount down to zero. And this has an impact on the pair and the oscillations. But even with that, you can still pair trade it because the violent oscillations of not only of Bitcoin, but also of MicroStrategy. So it's a, a very fun pair to trade, but I would rather be more comfortable pair trading something like a uh, FBTC from Fidelity, or maybe even IBIT with MicroStrategies, a little more precise than GBTC. So that is this, this one. Every time you see a green, you swap one for the other. Red, go back. It's that simple. It's child's play. Now, let's turn this around. What happens if we have GBTC to MicroStrategy as a pair? Same thing, trend. The last model actually is deviation. This model, again, same model, ATR, is on trend eight hour noise suppression high, you get a 73% win rate. So I'd really focus on the higher pair. I'd go MicroStrategy GBTC this one and use the deviation model and you can pair trade and then you can double your bags. Again, it's just hang out in discourse. You'll see how many people have done it. It's mind blowing and it's child's play. So if you have a retirement account spent, I don't even know how much this thing costs. The team has it somewhere but it's well worth the money. And we try as we basically sell all these things pretty much at cost just to help the community out there as well. And I've already <laughs> made my money and uh, made a lot of money from these tools too. So it's worth the investment for my own personal account. Believe me. Now let's talk Johnny V. For a person that is unable to buy options in Tesla, what is your opinion of leveraged 1.5 TSLL and 2X TSLT in lieu of options? So let's uh, break this down real fast. I have covered this before, so I'm going to go super quick. But a quick refresher, everybody did this about a year ago, actually. Um, the risks of going all in on leveraged ETFs. Uh, first of all, I always say pure form always when you can. And I also play a lot of options, so I break that rule myself. But leverage ETFs use borrowed money to amplify the returns of the underlying asset, which means that your gains can be magnified, but also your losses can be magnified too. There are also daily resets, the ETFs reset every day, which means that if the underlying go asset goes up in price in one day and then down in price the next day, you could still lose money, okay? Even if the underlying asset went up over the last two days. And there's a thing called path dependency as well. The returns of leverage ETFs are dependent on the path that the underlying asset takes, which means that if the underlying asset goes up and then down, you could lose more money. 
Uh, also, they can be very illiquid if you're moving around a lot of money. Um, we've experienced that with other assets lately, the importance of liquidity. Uh, the fees are high, and they have a lot of complexity in how they are run. And one and a half to two X, yeah, it's good. But the point is, you could do it, but do not hold these things long term. And also don't try to get cute and day trade them because the fees will eat you alive and the spreads will eat you alive. So if you have to do it, do it. Think of a 12 week time frame. Do not think of a six month or one year time frame. All right. And you can see here the actual loss. This is a chart. This is TSLA over TSLL. And you can see the delta in red over the space of, I don't know how many months this is, about a year, but you lose. So again, if you're a long-term holder, don't give away your assets to fees over time because they do add up and I'll add, I'll talk about that too as well. Also remember when you're in an exponential asset, don't sweat leverage too much because you're going to do so well. Now I did put this together yesterday because I was bombarded personally by people. I have people that work for the team here that bought their new Tesla. We've got two of them both bought Model Ys, which is so cool. Uh, friends that I haven't heard of from in years just activated their wife's 12.3.2 uh, on their car and people in the community like Josh here. Mind blown. But I want to summarize what FSD means. I've been promising you that chat GBT moment for quite some time. Here it is. It is here. But there's also a beautiful thing about it. And that is the normies don't know <laughs> what it is. So literally 12.3.2 update has jaws dropping. Being transformative is an understatement. And I tweeted this out yesterday. I shared it on Patreon, but it's worth sharing again. FSD's rollout across the US and Canada is a milestone in driving technology. Probably the biggest step change ever in the history of mankind. Please understand that. And the confidence that Tesla have, they're just deploying it to everybody. You don't do that with something that's going to cause a problem. Okay. Now remember as well, 1 million people die on the roads every year in car accidents. All right. Tesla have 6 million cars on the road. Do the math. People will die in car accidents because they get drunk, they get stoned, they speed, they ignore warnings. Yes. Okay, if you go 100 miles an hour into a brick wall or under a trailer and tops your head off, that's not Tesla's fault. That's the driver's fault. So when you read all the FUD out there in the papers, remember, a million people every year die in cars on the roads. Math, stats. All right, Tesla no longer also holds is held back by computing limits. So the learn, learning pace is accelerating. And what this actually means is they have unleashed the beast. They've now activated over 2 million cars in North America with this technology that they're pulling back in. And because they're no longer compute constrained, they can learn at an accelerated pace. So this thing is already 99% there, maybe 99.5% there. It's about to become completely perfect and then it'll be rolled out all over the planet. All right. And again, nobody knows about it. Nobody understands it. Also, once you experience it, there's no going back. People that told me that they drive more than 10 miles a day to work and back, they would not drive without it because it makes driving much more stress-free and you can focus on things you can i won't say what you can do when you have it i've done a lot of long distance driving and i won't say what i do but it's not recommended anyway and it's not just an upgrade too it's a pure profit boost for tesla all the margin goes straight to the bottom line it as i said it transforms your driving a stress-free journey journey reclaiming time lowering your blood pressure which is great and it saves lives okay and there's a thing called the jetsons era i had to google that and i may have spelt it wrong but it's kind of a kid's TV show, I think, of the future with cars that drive themselves and stuff like that. We are here. We are here today. And the world doesn't realize it too. And a shout out to the analysts as well uh, for keeping the price low and fudding the hell out of the price of Tesla so retail investors can get in at a very cheap price. Remember, over three years ago, Tesla was over 400 bucks. It didn't have a third of what it has today. And now it's $170. It's just a gift. So don't be mad that the price is down. Be happy. Stack. Unless, of course, you need to sell and retire in the next three months. That's the only time you could be mad. Anyhow, final point. I have official word as well that at least one, maybe two auto OEMs, like Ford, General Motors, Chrysler, I don't know who they are, are now in line 
because they saw what this is, they are now asking Tesla for this technology so they can build a plan of what they need to do with their vehicles, what types of hardware, what types of cameras, what types of software they need to load into the cars so they can be ready for this too. All right. This is a services model, a SaaS software model in what people think is a car company. I Sorry for spending time on that, but it's so important that you all get it. Just if you can try stack a 50 shares or 100 shares of Tesla. I know it sounds like a lot, but it's like buying one Bitcoin. Stick it away and don't think about it. That's all you have to do. Anyway, next question from Cognificent. I understand your sentiments on Phantom are not high because of its rank on the compendium and its distance from all-time high. However, with the new Sonic upgrade being rolled out and Phantom blockchain being one of the fastest in finality with transaction times, could this be enough momentum for Phantom to start eating more of the crypto market cap? Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant uh, story. And what I say might be unpopular, but I'm not paid by anybody. And I work for the retail investor. My job is to make you all successful. Okay. So for what I say here, when I say things that are just fact-based, people get offended. So I'm going to offend some people right now. Let's go. New Phantom Upgrade. Okay, what is it? Sonic. It does aim to, It's. I think it's a new virtual machine, and it will have better performance. Uh, apparently up to 65x more transactions, which could take it up to 2,000 TPS. And uh, let me see what else. It will reduce storage uh, requirements for the network, which will make it a little cheaper for people to run nodes, etc., It'll have an optimized consensus for faster transaction processing speed and finality, which is so important what we focus on. And what else? It'll have a lower requirement for uh, validators to 50,000 phantom as well for stakeholders. So that's all goodness. Let's talk about speed because you're dead right. And I have this unique metric you won't see anywhere else. It's basically the amount of TPS over time to finality. You can see the winner right now currently is Sui at a metric of 618,750. That's when you take their theoretical max TPS and you divide it by their time to finality, which is a fraction of one second. And then you have Solana. They have a higher max TPS, theoretical max TPS, but their finality is slower at two seconds. Uh, Aptos, faster at one second, etc. And you get that key ratio at the back. When you look at where Phantom is right now, it's about 2,250, and I was generous enough to turn the 2,000 TPS into 4,500 TPS just to give you that extra bit of comfort. But even at that, it still doesn't get to where the others are. All right, now I'll say this a few times today. You don't have to be as good as when you are behind. When you are behind, you have to be better, okay? Not as good as. So let's do some more data points, okay? This is the face-off, Solana versus Phantom. Just as an example, um, now, is Phantom, could it be as good as Solana? Nakamoto is four versus 21 for Solana. Nope, Solana's more decentralized. Block time, nope. TPS, nope. Daily transactions. Uh, <laughs> Solana does 10,248% more daily transactions. Daily active users. Solana has 5,300 daily active users. And I want to say something very important here as well. Just so you know, it's extremely difficult to get adoption halfway through the bull market. Extremely difficult. You can't just turn on a switch and say, come on over to our chain, everybody, and get active. No, the time to adopt was in the bear, not the bull. Let's get back to some more data. Uh, daily transactions over daily active users smoked. Fully due to market cap of daily transactions, smoked. Fully due to market cap of daily active users, smoked. TVL, smoked. DEX volume, smoked. Stablecoin market cap, smoked. Twitter followers, smoked. Again, it's not there. Could it get there? Everything is possible. But this is a bigger problem. Let's look at this. And this is kind of what concerns me. Uh, this is why things like the compendium score are not good. All right, there's a very big whale concentration issue. Uh, the top 10 holders own 95.27% per coin carp. Okay? Therefore, when this happens, 
And when people discover, as I say, the winner takes most, the people that run these chains know what's going on. It's like, okay, um, let's develop as hard as we can for a couple of months and try and make things faster. And then say we have a new upgrade and then pump the token and then exit. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but it's what's been happening for other chains for many, many years when they have this heavy concentration. Look at the one I mentioned earlier. Check out the whale concentration change over the last three to four years. It'll blow your mind. Now, let's compare again, just to show that I'm fair. Phantom versus Solana. 95.27% for Phantom for the top 10 holders. 9.39% for the top 10 holders of Solana. And we know some of those big holders are kind of places like Alameda, which became part of FTX, etc. So it is very, very different. And I'm just afraid, you know, they're not there. The upgrade will not make them better than Solana, not by any stretch. And even if you have the best chain in the world, okay, you come up with a new technology driven by AI, built, loaded, launched. If there's no community, if there's no adoption, if there's no breath of dApps, if there's no, no things driving traction like meme coins, etc., the chain is going to wither away and die. And that's just how nature works. That's not me. I'm just telling you how history works. So the question is, is Phantom looking for exit liquidity? I don't know. I don't know. I always make myself unpopular with these types of comments, but I will always be true to you all. That is my promise to you. But even if it works, again, being as good as is no good. Being better is good. But even being better, you still need to get that adoption. And it's very, very, very hard to get adoption halfway through a bull market. As Michael Saylor would say, there is no second best. Winner takes all. I forgot to add the CoinGecko article where literally Solana has half the mind share of all of crypto. ETH has 13% and the rest is spread amongst 3,000 or 30,000 coins. Okay, That's what you need to know. It's a hard truth. I hope it's not a hard pill to swallow, but these are just facts, okay? Next question from Michael K. Bitforms swapped their CEO last week. Should we be concerned about Bitforms? So I can't tell you the thousands of times I got this question last week. And it's just funny how, uh, if you've ever worked in, say, corporate America, CEOs change a lot, unless they are CEOs that have a huge bag and a very controlling position in the company, and they are typically founders. But other than that, typically CEOs swap in and out quite often, especially in smaller size companies in cutthroat areas. So this is the CEO, what they call a transition, not a firing or not somebody quitting. So the, uh, they did announce that Jeffrey Morphy will be stepping down as CEO during his tenure. He did great stuff. He expanded to Argentina, Paraguay, etc. But there were no reasons given for his departure. But apparently, it was planned. They had done an executive search both internally and externally for a long time to find somebody that could replace him. Maybe maybe the, the company got too big or he grew out of his own shoes or wanted to take some time off. Who knows? There could be a thousand different reasons. But under his reign, he took the uh, firm from a very small exahash to their plan is to get to 21 exahash by the end of the year. And he will continue on in the company, doing a whole bunch of other activities, which are listed here. And he will also ensure the smooth transition to the new CEO, who they've already identified, which comes from the inside anyway. So nothing bad there at all. In fact, on Friday or Thursday, last time the market was open, uh, the stock went up. So the market was not rattled, but retail investors were very rattled. And finally, this one here. Guess who just upgraded Bitforms? Ta-da! Cantor Fitzgerald, who are probably the best analysts for Bitcoin miners on the planet right now, in my opinion. They just came out with a $4 per share target, and they sandbagged to hell. Right now, it's trading at 2 bucks. And when they say it's going to four bucks, it does. And if you know my minor model, I shared an update of the updated minor model today for April, just fresh off the press. It is in Patreon as well. You'll see it there. Guess what? Now, well, I did buy, uh, in full disclosure, I bought BitFarms at two bucks. Uh, this is the ATR chart again. And it did flash a buy at $2.21. And Cantor Fitzgerald said it's going to four bucks. So that's not bad. That's a 2x. So everybody... Remember, when everybody is afraid, 
that's when you should be greedy. When everybody's greedy, that's when you should be afraid. Warren Buffett words from, I don't know when. Now, another minor question from Crazy Cat. Is there a way to play the ARB game between Bitcoin miners? As I write this, CleanSpark is down 3%, but BTBT is up 18%, and the other miners don't seem to move together. By the way, BTBT scored really well on my miner model. That was just pumped out this morning. So, uh, not financial. I don't own any, but I will take a closer look. Now, let's look at the correlation between the price movements of CleanSpark to BITB. Okay? CleanSpark is the blue line. BITB is when they move together. They move together quite a lot, but then they move together differently half the time, and they radically go opposed to each other half the time, and basically there is no correlation. You can't predict what they're going to do. And miners, again, it's a cutthroat business, very unpredictable, very driven by things like, oh my God, the CEO's leaving. Price dips. Hours later, goes back up. Okay, so that's that's the issue there. It's very difficult to tell what's going on. But what we can do, okay, what we can do is the following. Um, we can't pair trade them yet because they move based on news. For example, at the money, uh, when a company decides to issue more shares, to buy more rigs, to scale their business, to make more money, like CleanSpark last week, uh, copying the model of MicroStrategy, issuing money to buy Bitcoin, which shows they do well, or a new CEO, or the bigger miners as well, typically run faster than the smaller miners. Um, and then upgrades as well from analysts can all change the price. So it's extremely difficult to do this. What we can do, though, this is what we can do. So I just try to come up with an answer. We can long the winners and short the losers. And that, it's pretty easy to identify who the losers are. Again, <laughs> watch this space. So... We will do another minor question, which has a chart, which shows you the winners and the not so much winners as well. So this question first, though, from Olkis Dreit. Again, so many minor questions this week, it's insane. Is this a mistake? Options clean spark January 16, 2026, $15 call versus $22.50 call differ only by $2. Wouldn't the obvious raging, you know, be to buy the $15 call? Well, first of all, it's important. One of the things I did for a long time, for nearly 13 years, I used to be able to scan sheets visually and identify market pricing inefficiencies of options because they're not always priced correctly. But typically, the ones that have very low volume can have big deviations in price. It's also very important to look at the bid-ask spread. Let's look at these options, right? I pulled them up, and the ones you spoke about are underlined by red, but the image moved, so the line is off a little bit. But you can get the message. The point is, the price is nearly the same, despite nearly uh, $10 difference in strike price. And the answer is, what's wrong? The answer is market pricing inefficiency. But if you look at the amount of volume of some of these things, like 23 contracts, it's nothing. The other thing to note about these option prices is they make no sense. Why would you spend $15 on a call when the stock is basically $15? You're throwing your money away. You buy it on margin, which means you put down seven fifty, you borrow seven fifty at like six, seven percent, and you wait a year. You get much more return than spending so much on these options. They're so expensive. What you do with them is you sell them. You don't buy them, you sell them out of the money and you use that money to buy the stock. So a little trick there. But remember, trading options is very dangerous, so make sure you know what you're doing. Now, yet another minor question and uh, we'll talk about the winners all related everything here is dovetailing together the best trade i can think of right now from zifush is if bitcoin miners can act as a leverage proxy with two to five x delta on bitcoin buying strategic call options on miners such as cypher wolf riot would represent a huge opportunity are you thinking of that and what is the strike price and expiration so i have literally Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of contracts. At one stage, CleanSpark, all of the contract volume was bought by me. All of it. And it took me a long time to get it all because there was no liquidity in the market. So do I have it? I've got a truckload, absolute truckload of CleanSpark options, but all at very low strikes, like 250 5 bucks. Um, and I did make a couple of trades recently as well. I also have options on Riot, 
and I have a position now in BitFarms as well. So they're the three. I do not have Cypher, Wolf, or Riot um, currently, but everything can change because remember, as the price changes for these assets, it changes all the ratios in the model. So if, for example, CleanSpark goes to 50 bucks from say $17 or $18 where it is right now in aftermarket and nothing else moves, that means CleanSpark is very expensive on a relative basis to the other assets. Then the other assets bubble up and get cheaper. And then I swoop in and buy them or swap to them or whatever the case may be. So that's kind of how I play it. So let's talk about this as well. Again, reiterate, options are outrageously expensive. You're better off buying the stock on margin. The time to buy the options was when things like CleanSpark were at two bucks and change and the volatility was not there. You buy and you stack those things during the bear when nobody's looking at them. Nobody is looking at them because they think miners are lethal. <laughs> That's when you stack. Right now, with the crazy volatility of these underlying assets, the options pricing is insane. Absolutely insane. So they're simply too expensive to buy for me. If you do buy them, you're throwing your money away. Buy the stock on margin. Financial advice right there. Now, Jimmy the Kid, another minor question. Can we re revisit miners most are at or below their price when the ETS launched. How attractive is this space now? And do we think that the top three can all two to six X gains of Bitcoin or is it just clean spark that will move? So uh, interesting question. Remember, th this is the way I frame things up. All right. So MicroStrategy is a call option on the future of Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a call option in the future of how fiat is going to zero. And miners are a call option on a call option on the future of Bitcoin because they meant the Bitcoin. So breaking that down, if you think of uh, leverage, leverage, Bitcoin is already extremely volatile. MicroStrategy is a leveraged option on Bitcoin. Think of miners as 2x the leverage option <laughs> of what MicroStrategy is. So it's a crazy multiple because they meant the Bitcoin. Now, way back in 2023, I said, if the price of Bitcoin is not above $70,000 by the halving, half the miners go out of business. And there's a video of that somewhere. And right now, <laughs> the price is above 70000 which means they're making money. They're making a lot of money. And because of the action on chain, they're making a ton of, a ton of fees as well. So uh, they are well equipped. In fact, some of the top miners even if the price of Bitcoin falls to 29000 after the halving, they still make money, which is insane to think of. Let's talk about the last year. And again, in my theory of winner takes most, which is how the world works, you can see over the last 12 months exactly, CleanSpark is up 860%, BitFarms up 263%, Mara up 263%. So they're the top three performers. But you can see the big deviation because CleanSpark were able to issue a lot of stock. Yes, there was dilution. 126% dilution in a year. And that's bad. But they sell the shares to buy rigs to have the most efficient fleet and scale their hash at a very low market cap. And that is the exact same thing that MicroStrategy is doing. It's the MicroStrategy playbook. Issue shares, ATM. It's like an ATM pulling cash from it and buying Bitcoin, <laughs> they issue shares and they buy rigs and they scale and they have a lean, mean uh, cost structure as well, which is very powerful. So, and they're gonna to continue to do that and they're doing it now. And that's why the market's rattled because they're gonna issue another 800 bucks, 800 million when the market cap is at 4 billion. So yeah, a 17%, 18%, 19% of the actual market cap, but it's not like they're going to just go and have a big party in Vegas with the money, no. They're going to order more rigs, scale their hash. This is a nuclear arms race to build as much hash as possible as quickly as you can with the cheapest electricity and the most efficient rigs. That's it. That's the calculus for miners. And favorite part of the week, everybody, uh, helping animals. Uh, this week, we donated to Paws for the support and care on food and shelter for Lillian, who is a bunny rabbit uh, who had a bad infection, but is much better now, and also to Animal Rescue League of Berks County, I think in Pennsylvania, if I'm not mistaken, uh, a member to raise support for a low-cost spay and neuter program as well, which uh, helps animals as well. I know it sounds cruel, but it's actually not cruel at all. So a big thank you to the team in Berks County as well for doing that. And 
Ivan tomorrow. <laughs> we added a little time chart because it's very confusing. We're on Ivan's channel, but uh, the time is 7.30 a.m. my time, uh, Central Time in the U.S. I think it's 9.30, Eastern Time, U.S. 10.30, uh, UTC, which I think is London Time, 14.30, and Stockholm, Sweden, Central European Time, German Time, uh, 16.30, Netherlands, etc., and in Australia. I don't remember if they have <laughs> seasoning change and everything. Thank you, The Great Escape, too. And don't forget to hit the like and subscribe. A lot of work. Three days of work goes into these things. Uh, it's not trivial. Let's do some live Q&A as well. And I'll let you all get back to your Easter with your families and have fun. And Bitcoin is at 71,000, 71,100. It hit 71,300 today. So that's not bad at all. And uh, thank you as well to the mods in the chat. By the way, the team behind me, I make them work seven days a week. So... Hit the like for them as well. Piper, happy Easter. Happy Easter to you, buddy. Uh, thank you so much up there in Canada. Doc Intern. Uh, last few days, a lot of hit pieces. Mainstream media by MicroStrategy being overpriced. Big dip. Do you expect further drop? Will it maintain its premium? Or shall we just huddle or convert to some IBIT? So this is interesting. Um, I knew this. I uh, had a feeling uh, the MicroStrategy question would come up. So you have these things called hedge funds. And they come up with these novel ideas. And they... They get into a position and then they publish a paper and then the market reacts as uh, they say, oh, we're going short and everybody gets worried. This is the second firm that has gone short MicroStrategy. The last one got destroyed. They got squeezed to death because their gambit was to go long Bitcoin, go short, but they didn't understand what MicroStrategy does, nor did they understand they'd issue money to buy Bitcoin and the price of Bitcoin goes up. And also... The big danger is we know MicroStrategy has to be added to the S&P 500. It's currently ranked number 280 in terms of market cap. When that happens, everybody is forced to buy MicroStrategy and there will be that premium. Now, putting it in simple terms, if you think about a company, what is a company? A company is something that has a future promise of earnings. Okay, MicroStrategy's earnings technically are the gains they make on bitcoin okay the average price of the paid for bitcoin is about 32 33 dollars bitcoins are seventy one thousand dollars, and they own over 120,000 of them every time every quarter bitcoin goes up they will realize massive unrealized gains which will impact their eps okay so that's uh, kind of what people don't realize also the fact that every time they issue shares they take in money. They buy Bitcoin. Bitcoin goes up. The market cap goes up. It's just, it's the infinite money glitch. And uh, it's hard to chase. It's hard to short. I hold because my cost base is so low. It's sub, probably like after selling calls against positions for a long time, probably sub 160. So I'd incur massive capital gains if I sold. So I'm stuck. But if you can do it tax-free, you can try play the ARB like we showed before between... Uh, GBTC or FBTC or IBIT and trade it, but have a process because you don't want to be caught out. Like if you are in IBIT and MicroStrategy gets added to the SP 500, it'd be hard to catch that puppy. Um, thank you, Doc Intern. HS1, what, uh, who you think will drop their interest rates first, EU or US? EU have to. EU is a hot mess right now. The uh, manufacturing is destroyed. Um, spending retail spending is smashed they have to destroy i actually made a post as well on patreon of the central banks and a, just a little microcosm issue of canada the canadian economy is dependent shout out to piper up there in canada is dependent on real estate okay the longest mortgage i think people can get in canada is five years a lot of mortgages about 30 to 40 percent of them are rolling into a 7.5 percent rate but they come from a 2.5% rate. People will not be able to afford their mortgages unless the Canadian Central Bank cuts their rates or they will have their own little global financial crisis for real estate, which will destroy the economy. The Canadian government, hopefully they're smart enough to know that, they will cut rates. Europe will cut rates. Uh, the Fed is playing hardball, Joe Boning. But the Fed is going to be paying one, $2 trillion dollars Two trillion on interest, probably by the end of this year. <laughs> That's like three times the defense budget. Uh, can you imagine all the schools and hospitals 
and education programs you could build with that, with that money instead of wasting it on paying yourself interest and printing money to pay the interest. The whole thing is just a freaking farce, in my opinion, but don't get me started. Uh, Canada will probably cut. They have to cut soon. Uh, Europe, probably at the same time. Also, there's eight other central banks around the world that have to cut. Remember, we live in a world of debt. That's why I make Bitcoin videos to save as many souls as I possibly can before I expire myself. So thank you for the question, HS1. George William, I, you were all the best. Thank you. Thank you for all your work. Thank you for being here, George. And Scooby-Doo, happy Easter, James. Do appreciate the work. Best channel on YouTube. Thank you so much for being here. And I love doing this seven days a week. Uh, James, look at Jupiter Go. You are my hero. I know we bought a truckload of Jupiter at 46 cents. When I'm doing this and I'm not looking at the market, but... Oh, wow. Yes. Oh, wow. 165. That's nice. And we bought it 46 cents like three weeks ago. It's insane. And Gito is up too, 16%. Chat is up. Woohoo. We bought chat at like a dollar. Madness. This, these markets are just mind boggling. I've never had so much fun in my life. And nor have you all too. Thank you so much as well. Uh, Benny, the Max Journey, has a big bag of Jupiter. Well done. Keep it all safe as well. Watch your security out there. It takes a lifetime to make it and a second to lose it all. Uh, Benny, the Mac is back with the Tesla question. Tesla's cool, but James, concentrate. It's all about Jupiter coins. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. And this is a good question because he bought a crazy amount at 50 cents and now it's tripled in three weeks. So Benny, the Mac, well done. But always remember... When things like this happen, take your initial allocation off the table, stick it somewhere safe. Remember the balance between risk and reward. And yes, Jupiter's taken over the world. We said that. I made a whole video on Jupiter and why it's special. And it's good to have. So well done. But don't have all your eggs in one basket because uh, that's just not prudent. So anyway, but you might as well ride this for now because just look at uh, a lot of questions regarding uh, if Jupiter gets to the Uniswap all-time high from the last bull market, it'll do something like a 26x. Relative market cap is important to look at. Um, Soul Strider, I can't thank you and your team enough. I'm using the ARB cloud to pair trade MicroStrategy and iBit my Roth. Awesome! That's what we're talking about. And literally, you can double your bag in three months if you are disciplined. Now, is it time to move back to Bitcoin or are you holding MicroStrategy for more short-term growth? having trouble finding my rhythm. So right now, uh, Bitcoin, I'm a buyer, or MicroStrategy, I'm a buyer around $1,500. After that, uh, you know, the ARB cloud works really, really well. I shared a post on Patreon, I think on Thursday or maybe Wednesday, I can't recall, of how it still works very effectively. Um, just, just, just play the timing. Uh, watch Bitcoin. Keep an eye on the news and the grumblings of MicroStrategy being added because you do not want to be an iBit when MicroStrategy gets added to the S&P 500. So watch for that very carefully. But when, when MicroStrategy is drastically oversold, move to Bitcoin. When it's drastically overbought, move back to Bitcoin. That's what I'd recommend. And uh, check, hang out in Discourse too. Tons of people are just printing money on that thing all day long. Harvey Mushman. Could you please address the valuation of MicroStrategy? It's massively overpriced compared to their Bitcoin holding. Again, I did before, as I as I spoke. They borrow money to buy Bitcoin. Bitcoin goes up. Their earnings per share per quarter go crazy. That's the infinite money glitch. That's what they do. Every time the price of Bitcoin goes up, people have to buy MicroStrategy. It's that constant perpetual bid because it's indexed in the Russell 2000 and other types of funds like that. Like, like Vanguard uh, own a lot of MicroStrategy. Not because they're believers in MicroStrategy or Bitcoin, because they have index funds galore and they all have to buy. buy it. Excuse me. As Bitcoin goes up, MicroStrategy price goes up, market cap goes up, and all these funds need to index into it. It's that simple. Infinite money glitch. Keep on, keep on riding the train, but play, but play the ARB if you can do it tax free. It's golden. I, I will be starting to do that more myself. I have a uh, the ability to do that now in a tax free type situation. Now, Benny the Max Journey, uh, all time high jupe. <laughs> he loves jupe. Now, let's go with Soul Chat and Soul Chat up another 15% too today. So, 
these these not only is Solana the consensus trade, but the Sol also where the money's at. Everybody, forget the old stuff from the last bull run. It's just where the money is, and that's what you should all be looking for. Follow the money, and thank you as well for your super sticker, Silicon Valley Stoic, Miles in Arizona. Investing KO, Pancake Panda, Adam Q, Brock, Andy, Glenn Joe, Jeff Hammer, Happy East, everybody, A Bottle of Red, Sigma 103, Dog One, Stephen Romps, The Great Escape, and Joe, Moto 89, Shark Lover, and Doc in Turn. Last question. Last year, convinced two colleagues to flip 401k into MicroStrategy and now up over 400%. Two more joined later. All now on Patreon. We appreciate you beyond words. Thank you so much, Doc Intern. Again, it's a crazy time to be alive. But uh, stay humble, stay healthy, stay well. Have a nice holiday. Thanks all for coming. And thank you to the mods in the chats and the 6,000 people watching live. Hit that like, and I'll see you all tomorrow morning bright and early. Bye-bye.